Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna introduce uh, how can we design SGNAs uh, for CRISPR-Cas9 system using uh, to knock out your gene, your protein for your experiment. So as we know, CRISPR-Cas9 has become one of the most powerful gene editing tool and it's um, used in almost every lab right now for scientific research. And this is important, right? So <clears throat> let me uh, give a, first give a brief introduction of the system. And uh, maybe some of you already know that. Uh, so the system com uh, consists of a Cas9 protein. So this protein can uh, actually is a nucleus. And uh, uh, it can form a complex with uh, guide RNA. So this is a guide RNA. Uh, this part is fixed, and this is uh, this this part of the guide RNA uh, is complementary with the tar with the target sequence. Okay, and uh, you can design uh, whatever sequence you want target right. So you can target any gene or any protein. And uh, then <clears throat> by searching the palm sequence, here is a palm sequence, but it doesn't uh, show up. Show show. Uh, then we are buying this DNA, and then uh, so the guide RNA will complementary with the uh, target DNA, and then the Cas9 protein will cut the DNA at the cutting site and cause a double strand break. So this is uh, this is a major editing step, and then there are the DNA repair pathway where. Uh, repair this DNA either with insertion or also it can cause deletion. So, um, so today, but there are uh, different factors that may affect this process. For example, if you uh, design different sequence, the efficiency is different. And uh, another factor is if you call, uh, if you, if the DNA after repair, it causes a frame shift uh, mutation, then the protein will cannot be expressed properly, right? And then the protein is gone, so that's just knockout. But uh, if it's in frame, for example, it will introduce three base pair insertion or three base pair deletion, six base pair deletion, etc. then the protein can still express, but it will lose some uh, or insert some amino acid so that the protein is there. So that may cause problem, right? But another another one is if if the protein is still there, but you you add some mutations uh, in the very conserved region, for example, the protein domain, then this the the protein cannot function well. So it still cause a uh you can cause a, a say it cause a loss of function, right? Uh, so com combine all these three fact consider all these factors. Then uh, how can we design the most uh, optimal SGNA for experiment? Um, actually, I did this uh, uh, study, and uh, uh, what we do is uh, to combine the uh, so there are different tools and softwares uh, to predict the efficiency from a different aspect. Like uh, these tools are for the uh, sequence based uh, efficiency and these tools are the for frame shift and uh, these ones are the indicators of uh, conservation protein domain etc and we combine all these uh, scores and uh, features using a um, machine learning approach we trained on a uh, different data set and get a final score for the knockout and comparing with others um, Method it reaches the highest performance right now uh, at present uh, for the protein knockout. So this is good, right? Uh, so if we want for each gene, we can select the most useful uh, guide. Um, here I also developed um, a web, so you can uh, you can go there. Uh, 
um okay let's copy it oh oops no matter doesn't matter let's uh Let's go to the, wait a minute. Let's go to this uh, website. Actually, it looks like this. And uh, you can see, um, you can select, uh, here are different choices. You can select highly efficient guys for one or more protein here. So clean here. And uh, it, first you select some genome and this is a pretty, uh, because it is a little bit older genome, but it doesn't matter. And uh, human, mouse and monkey. And uh, you can select the gene symbol and the symbol ID, etc. For example, let's say, uh, let's just uh, click this. This gene and uh, it will show all the guide and uh, the alignment shows how how many how many other low sites we are aligned to right if it's two then to map to multiple sites that's not good it will cause off target right and uh, here is the genome uh, low site and it's the target gene and the different scores means uh, this score means uh, uh, SGI activity uh, predicted from the sequence, and this is for the amino acid. Uh, so whether it's uh, conserved or in a domain, this frame shift. So combine these scores. Uh, all these scores are the, the larger, the better, right? And the guide pro score is combine all these scores to get a final score. Usually, uh, if it's larger than zero point zero point five or something, that's pretty good. And uh, you can also click here, and it will lead you to the genome browser. And uh, you can see, okay, um, you can see exactly what's the, uh, what's it, what's uh, your SGI, where's the SGI, and uh, where is target, whether it's target, the amino acid, where is target, right? And other features you won't see. So, and uh, okay, let's go back. And if you want to, uh, uh, if you want to uh, select a genome wide, like uh, for every gene, you want to select top uh, SGNAs to do the screen. And uh, in, okay, there's already uh, some. Some genome-wide uh, library I already generated for you. That uh, you can download, right? And then uh, to get any uh, user-defined gene list, you can use a Python script here and uh, upload your gene list text. So I don't show this; uh, it's uh, pretty easy. Um, so I will I will leave this uh, website. The, the address in the uh, in the text under the video, so you can so you guys can go and try to play with it. Hopefully, you can find your best SNF experiment. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.